Hello everybody, I wish everything is fine. Today we'll talk about the first lecture in uh, module uh, multiple sequence alignment. In this lecture, we will talk about building a multiple sequence alignment and how we can build it and why we can use it and uh, in which purpose we can uh, use it. This is a part of the, uh, the course Introduction to Bioinformatics Online Course, IPT 2016. And uh, of course, we will talk about other lectures in the same modules and also don't forget to uh, to see the practicals uh, of these lectures uh, in this uh, lecture we will learn about why multiple sequence alignment is useful for scientists and how we can get sequences from different databases and of course we'll talk about also the difference between three uh, programs to make multiple sequence alignment which is Clastal W muscle and Tcafe and of course the, briefly and also we'll talk about building a formative multiple sequence alignment and comparing sequences that you cannot uh, align um, first of all we have to identify situation where uh, we uh, cannot use multiple sequence alignment or multiple sequence alignment don't help in some situation which we identify uh, in this three different situation number one in a sampling project if you are working a sampling project and you are assembling sequences uh, in a sequencing project the multiple sequence alignment doesn't help you uh, if you want to turn a, an ST cluster into a, a gene sequence also don't use multiple sequence alignment is not useful for you number three is uh, when uh, the sequence you are interested in is has no homology or has no homologue in the sequence database in this case also uh, multiple sequence alignment will not help so uh, in this case only in this case you can use functional criteria and conducting a pattern search it may help you in situation like this uh, in building multiple sequence alignment there is many purposes uh, for that but we will see how we can gather sequences uh, this will you will see it in the practical and multiple making a multiple sequence alignment we will see that uh, there is three famous programs for making multiple sequence alignment number one is cluster W everybody use it it has a lot of citation so you can use it very safely uh, you can also use muscle muscle is very fast if you have a lot of sequences so in this situation you can use muscle and the third situation if you have uh, you have another program called tcafe is very accurate and combine sequences with structure this is the third situation uh, and third uh, program you can use in recommended program in making a multiple sequence alignment there is also also other programs but these three are the most famous cluster W muscle or T uh, um, also we should learn in this lecture that creating uh, and comparing multiple sequence alignment with comparing sequences that cannot be aligned this also we should learn uh, in the coming uh, lectures so um, in many ways, uh, multiple sequence alignment are two bioinformaticists uh, like Swiss knife for MacGyver. So MacGyver in the movies you was using uh, Swiss knife to open doors to do some bombs to make uh, things like this cool things with uh, his Swiss knife. So multiple sequence alignment for biologist and for bioinformatician is like uh, Swiss knife for MacGyver. You can do many things uh, with multiple sequence alignment, but uh, you have to know what you are looking for exactly, what your study is about, why you want to use it. So uh, it's it's uh, you have to know many things about uh, your work and your the biology behind it. And in fact, it's more than art than uh, it's more art than science. It's requiring to use everything you know in bioinformatics and in biology to uh, do the alignment. So simply, this is the informative to build the informative uh, alignment. You need to do number one, gather your sequence. So you have to know how to gather uh, 
gather your sequence uh, in, the, in the right way and in the right format. Number two, how to compute a multiple sequence alignment how to do the computation and as we said you have to choose one of the programs as we just mentioned in the last slide about how to compute a multiple sequence alignment number three evaluate the quality uh, of your alignment it is evaluation steps are very important and many program can do that like the cafe uh, interpreting your uh, multiple sequence alignment and this is uh, the most important one because to, to, to do this this is what what will help you in your, your publication to convince people why this alignment is important why what kind of information you can get from this alignment what kind of new information and if this information is is really a matter or not so you this interpretation interpretation needs uh, a good background uh, that you can use and of course uh, this is a very important step uh, and very easy but a lot of people forget it is to keep the sequence for further analysis and also uh, to keep it for future use uh, uh, for your publication uh, what we are looking for uh, in the multiple sequence alignment there is four major criterion and we will talk about it uh, and it of course this four major criterion everyone different uh, from uh, depending on uh, your uh, what you are looking for and depending on the purpose of your uh, study number one is structure similarity people do a multiple sequence alignment to to see structure similarity this is number one and if you look at the structure similarity if if the 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 the, the sequences in the same column for example amino acid in the same column so this means that this the secondary structure or the structure that is coming uh, out of these sequences will be the same so if uh, that's that's very important uh, uh, thing for many people that they are looking uh, at structure similarity of their protein so what they are looking for is sequence similarity uh, in the, and this sequence similarity should represent uh, structure similarity uh, in their uh, proteins for example uh, number two some people look for evolutionary similarity so uh, in this case they are looking for amino acids or nucleotides uh, they, that are in the same columns and uh, of course this means that this related to that so we can find for example that many proteins in the chimpanzee are very similar uh, uh, pro like proteins in human for example and and you can see how much the degree between the the relationship between this organism or other organism uh, and how similar the protein and for example the shrimp and mouse and chicken and fruit fly how are they are similar in the same protein or the same gene or how far they are from each other this evolutionary similarity or evolutionary differences also be, can be calculated through multiple sequence alignment so we can uh, for example identify a gene and then I, after that we can compare that gene in different organism and see how similar uh, this uh, gene or how different that gene from from one organism to another organism and this when we will do one practical uh, about something like this in the practical session just to compare uh, to see the evolutionary similarity of one gene between different uh, organisms. This is the purpose number two. Number three is the functional similarity. Functional similarity means that we are looking for similar function. So in different genes or different proteins, so we are looking for uh, positions of nucleotides or amino acid in the same column and this gives you a uh, structure similar structure and this the meaning of similar structure is similar function so that's what we are looking for so we would like to predict similar function for different proteins that have similar structure so some simply we can have similar 
uh, function. So this is the third purpose, third purpose that we can use uh, multiple sequence alignment to predict this also. Number four is sequence similarity. Actually, um, this is uh, what happens usually when we make alignment. The sequence, similar sequence, always come in the same column. So amino acids uh, in the same column are those that yield an alignment with maximum similarity. Most programs use this sequence similarity because it's very easy. It's very easy to, to use, and most programs use this criteria. But it's uh, this when sequences are related to each other. Actually, we can see that there is structure similarity, there is evolutionary similarity, there is functional similarity, and and all this means sequence similarity. So, if sequence similarity is, exists, we can see that there is structure and evolutionary and functional similarity. So, this could be all one. These four criteria could be one criteria, if. Uh, if they are really have the same structure same sequence uh, and of course gives uh, all uh, other uh, meaning so uh, main application why we why uh, of multiple sequence why we use multiple sequence alignment we use it for extrapolation extrapolation means a good multiple sequence alignment can help convince you that uh, an uncharacterized sequence is really a member of a protein family for example if you have a protein family new protein family and you want to know if uh, if, if, if this protein member sorry if, if this protein which you have uh, is what kind of protein that is related to that protein so simply this is called extrapolation so alignment include for example, in Swissport, there's a program called um, you can take plast and you can go to XPASI and write down your protein. You can just put your new protein in plast and search, uh, press, uh, press head, uh, press uh, head uh, uh, extrapolation, or, or just search for you will find a protein family that is related to uh, your protein. This is called extrapolation. And, and this uh, can be used, you can use PLAST for uh, that. Uh, number two is phylogenetic analysis. Simply you can see how uh, your gene, uh, or how your protein is related to other genes. And if, if you carefully choose the sequences you, are, you include in your analysis, in multiple sequences, you can reconstruct the history of these proteins, for example, or history of your genes. You want to know phylogenetic analysis between one gene or one protein. And in our practical, we use, will do something like this. There is many programs that can consider this. Um, and for example, Philip. Philip uh, is a Pasteur, uh, one of the program in Pasteur Institute, and uh, we can you can build a phylogenetic tree, uh, and using this uh, multiple sequence alignment, on, and to, to respect this criteria. Um, number three, we also can use for pattern identification. For example, or for, uh, if you, for example, need to make uh, to find a pattern pattern in your protein by discovering conserved positions for example you can identify region that is characteristic of a function this means pattern pattern means a, a, a region that is a characteristic of a function so, so it's um, this fun characteristic region simply you can say that we can this gives a pattern uh, in that protein family so simply in this step what we are doing we are what we we, we do we just get uh, multiple proteins we align them and then use something like web logos uh, to find out what kind of pattern in our sequence this can be used in proteins this can also use in uh, in um, in uh, dna nucleotides to find for example um, uh, promoter regions uh, to find regulatory elements in dna stuff like this many many things can be used and if you go to web logo you will find a lot of examples uh, that uh, have been used uh, 
uh, have been uh, many three, many examples that have been discovered uh, through uh, this criteria. Um, also, domain identification. Uh, it's possible to turn uh, multiple sequence alignment into a profile that describes protein family. If you want to uh, to find a protein a domain of a protein family that's always used in that protein family, for example, heat shock factor one, you want to find a domain that always can be found in that protein family. Simply, you can gather the, the multiple sequence alignment of this protein family and then uh, to make it to gather them and make alignment and to go to prosite this another website prosite and this prosite can tell you what kind of domains in that protein family that exist in different uh, organisms also of course uh, as we said before that week you can find regulatory dna regulatory element uh, and there is uh, many programs that use do this and one of them is gibbs g-i-b-s-s uh, g-i-b-b-s -S, -S, and this also gibbs sampler is one of the very uh, famous program in this uh, to, to make this uh, uh, function Uh, structure protection is another thing a good a multiple uh, alignment can give you almost perfect prediction of the protein secondary uh, structure for both proteins and RNA uh, sometimes it can also help in building uh, the 3d uh, model Uh, the DNA, DNA regulatory element to find DNA this is also very important and, and as we said before that uh, there is many programs that can do this like Gibbs sampler and in this situation we are identifying regulatory element for example for gene uh, regulation and expression so in this case we, we can use this kind of program to find multiple sequences that are using uh, for example pro uh, promoter regions uh, tata box stuff like this and the gene that is controlling this gene uh, and uh, and that's why we uh, use many uh, there is many programs for that uh, and for example gips sampler gips sampler sampler and this is the link for it uh, is using uh, is looking for this in the dna regulatory element um, another another thing, another application for multiple sequence alignment is structure prediction. A good multiple uh, sequence alignment can give also you uh, an, ally, an almost perfect prediction of your protein secondary structure. Uh, and, and many programs that use this and, and, and predict this and uh, for protein or also for RNA. And um, based on that, you can build a 3d model so so that's why uh, structure prediction is very uh, important and one of the main application and uh, of uh, multiple sequence alignment and uh, this is uh, very important too um, um, also one of the main application in is SNP analysis um, uh, as we see that various genes or alleles uh, have, often have different amino acid sequences uh, multiple uh, sequence alignment can give can help you predict whether uh, an unsynonymous single nucleotide polymorphism is likely to be harmful or not. And there is uh, a very famous program for doing this, uh, and which is, uh, is is called SIFT uh, or SIFT. SIFT can help you to determine uh, or predict whether a non synonymous single nucleotide polymorphism is uh, likely to be harmful uh, or not. So this is called NS SNP analysis. Uh, uh, PCR analysis in this case, this is one of the main application also. It's a, it can make you to help. Uh, this can help you to simply to to. Uh, you can use that to uh, 
to identify list generative portion of protein family. In this case, you can see how you can uh, make a PCR, a good PCR for your gene and isolate uh, and design primers for it. And there is a program for that, um, it's called key ho code hop, uh, C O D E hop. So, code hop, uh, and here is the link for that, and, and it's very simple and you can use it to uh, identify the less degenerated portion of the protein family in order to fish out new members by PCR. So, what are the kinds of sequences you are looking for? It is the looking for, you always look, bear in mind that uh, in evolution, important amino acids or nucleotides are not allowed to mutate. So, for instance, active sites uh, of enzymes are much conserved. So, what you are looking for, you are looking for a um, portion of uh, your sequence that is conserved. So, portion of your in your sequence that is conserved, that you are what you are looking for, and this what will help you will help you in your study. This important residue change more easily, uh, sometimes randomly, and sometimes in order uh, to adapt function. So that's why we are looking for the most important uh, region in our uh, uh, is the most conserved region. So there is here is some tips for naming sequences. Uh, number one, never uh, use white spaces. Uh, number two, don't use uh, special symbols like hashtag whatever and never use names longer than 15 characters and never give the same name to different uh, sequences all these four tips actually if you miss one of them you will not be able to align and there is many error messages can come to you because of these four simple mistake it's very very simple uh, points but this can cause you a trouble uh, because simply every time you make a sequence alignment you will get an error message every time you can get, make alignment you get an error message and you don't know why so simply you can uh, forget uh, to make uh, to, to not to use a white spaces uh, or you can put a hashtag or any simple characters uh, and then this will cause the same thing or you can put a name is very long or you can also put the same name twice for example and forget to put a unique identifier for each one so you have to make uh, a simple name uh, with limited number of uh, characters and um, no special symbol in the name and don't put the same name twice in the same alignment for different sequences and never use, use white spaces. Also, uh, to, tips to make, uh, to, to, uh, if you have uh, uh, difficult multiple sequence alignment to, uh, to interpret, simply you can remove the uh, insertion or deletion, just keep the formative blocks. Also, redo the, the multiple sequence alignment for, with smaller set if, if it doesn't work and uh, keep trimming uh, to interpret you always so this is three steps so number one is to remove uh, parts that is always make trouble that the poor, uh, that have insertion duration whatever and redo the multiple multiple sequence alignment in a smaller set and keep trimming your uh, alignment and as to interpret and as you see we have to keep the informative uh, block this three steps actually called uh, enhancing uh, alignment so uh, here we will uh, our practical as we will see in the practical we will see how to retrieve uh, protein uh, H factor 1 and uh, from X passy and how to uh, uh, select and uh, the top sequences and do the analysis along the entire lens and choose six different uh, six different organisms and the difference between uh, them all um, of course this is the, the type of method what we are using and we can see that uh, in uh, later in the uh, practical lecture 
this practice will be followed later on in our uh, lecture as we are uh, please take a look at it and listen to it and uh, follow these steps and you can uh, know what exactly you are looking for